What's good, YouTube family? So beginning this haircut, I'm gonna prep the hair before I pick up any clipper or trimmer. Since the client is a wavelength haircut, to prep the hair, you wanna comb the hair. And when I say comb, you wanna comb and not brush, because brushing lays the hair flat and combing lifts the hair off of the scalp. And that's what you want because you wanna be able to give the most even cut possible. He's a first time client and he said he wanted a wavelength, that's all he said. So I had a number one guard all the way, or I think I had it halfway open maybe something. But he ended up saying that you can see he said he wanted lower, so I'm giving him just a one close. I'm going over everything multiple times, making sure that I comb through it just to give the most even cut possible. I'm doing a burst taper, so I'm gonna put this baud line in at like an arch shape. And then to be official with my time as a barber, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the cheek hair while I'm in this area. Cause it's gonna save me time. Now in the back, I'm gonna do pretty much, I'm not gonna make it like a drastic arch, but just give it a little bit of arch in the back. Making sure that my ball lines are clean and even because it's like the foundation of the haircut and it's gonna play a big factor in how clean of a cut that you can give and cleanliness looks like godliness so doing the same thing on this side y'all make sure that the sides are as close to each other as you can get them i have my instincts to start to fade all the way open going up about three quarters of an inch and every guideline that i set in i set it in the same same way i set in my ball line so since I set the ball line in at the arch shape, now I'm gonna set this first guideline or every guideline in at this arch shape. I'm gonna go to the top of it, make sure all the hairs are the same length. And I'm gonna close the lever halfway, go halfway up the guideline that we just established. Now I'm gonna close my lever one more, tap that bottom line to soften it up. And then I'm gonna close my lever all the way, tap the bottom line take it out completely and in my opinion open the close before you put a guard on is the most important part of the fade because it's the foundation of the fade and it's going to play a big factor in determining how clean and even of a fade that you can give now i have my number one guard on and i'm going up like three quarters of an inch to a full inch most of the time a one guard open will blend into a one guard close a one guard open against the grain will blend in most time with the one guard closed against the grain. For those of you who don't know. So, I'm going up about three quarters of an inch to a full inch. I went open, then I went halfway, and now I'm closing it. And I know it's not gonna take this bottom line out completely, but it's gonna soften it up for me, for me to be able to come in and take it out completely when I do my finishing detail work. Now y'all can see it's a few dark spots, so I went ahead and I threw on my one and a half and I got it open at first. And then you can just see where it's at. I'm gonna open it, I'm gonna close it. And I'm really just doing detail work with it. Um, just pulling this fade together. And then if the one open against the grain doesn't blend in to the one closed, the one and a half open definitely will. Even closed, honestly. Most of the time, I should anyway. Now, because I like how the masters cut, instead of putting a zero guard on that clipper, I like how the masters give a soft finish and touch. So that's what I'm doing. I'm finishing it up, doing the detail work with the masters, and by detail work i mean lever play so open and closing my lever on my blade when need be and corner work using the last couple teeth of my blade or the corner of my blade to pinpoint dark spots bring them to the light and make the fade as smooth as possible when it comes to the back of this haircut it's literally the same exact steps but the guidelines are going to be a little bit bigger because we're working with a bigger surface area so instead of going up like three quarters of an inch I'm gonna go up like a full inch for my guidelines. But it's literally open halfway, one notch before halfway, and then closed for my fading process. And then obviously, 
what's going to set you apart as a barber is learning to do detail work as far as like the cutting aspect of barbering detail work is what's going to set you apart so of course you go open halfway and close but once you learn like i don't know once you get that real barber eye and be able to do like detail work that's what's going to make your face stand out and like i said that's what's going to separate you as a barber as far as the cutting aspect so make sure that you you know learn how to do that now we have a one and a half but i'm gonna just let this uh be right for the rest of this god bless y'all My message for today is from the faith, the facts segments that I've been telling y'all about. And the title is why fight a defeated foe? Why would you fight an enemy that's already defeated, rejected, restricted, and awaiting confinement? Revelations 2010. Use the power of attorney of the name of Jesus in your life. Don't waste time on someone already defeated. Walk on them and watch the God of glory work and be a blessing in your life. James 4.7 resist not assist resist you don't fight with the enemy you don't even talk to him you just resist him resist that fastly in the faith philippians 2 10 everything bows at the name of jesus don't say yeah but and call something to you that you don't want don't open up the field for the enemy to plant a seed i hope and pray that didn't go over your head imagine this imagine you have a garden and you got to open the door for stuff to get in why would you ever let anything bad in? You can't, so don't let it in your life. You know what I mean? If you wouldn't let it in your garden that you were trying to keep, maintain and produce good fruit, why would, and good harvest, why would you let anything come in your life that's not gonna produce good harvest and godly harvest? Only open the door for your garden. Only open the door for your life, for good godly things. Your seed should produce godly harvest. First John 4, 4, we don't try, we do. James 1 I know it's gonna work Isaiah 55 11 you have to believe what the Word of God says walk on the enemy and keep going Acts 12 13 don't complicate the Word of God children are born believers until you teach them to doubt so why would you teach them to doubt instead of teaching them to doubt teach them to teach them the Word of God doubt your doubts when you have a doubt of something that say God put something in your heart to do and when you got a doubt about it, doubt the doubt, you know what I mean? And believe what God says. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Jesus is coming. Hey, y'all, I want y'all to hear that again. Because somebody got to tell y'all. And if I got to be that one, I'm going to tell y'all. But Jesus is coming. So make sure that you're ready for when he come back. Because he coming like a thief in the night at an hour nobody expects. So just make sure that you're ready because he coming for his people. You know what I mean? So... Spend time getting to know God by reading his word, worshiping him and him alone, and having fellowship with him and praising him. And y'all, when I give y'all verses with these, I challenge you to actually type it in your phone or pick up your physical Bible and actually read the verses so you can have a better understanding of God and his word and who he is. Because if you don't know God's word, then you don't know God. But if you know God's word, then you know God. For the lineup preparation, y'all, um... I'm just go ahead. I got some trust me. I believe on this. Unless this is me cleaning it, but I'm pretty sure I just put trust me on there. Yeah. So I just put some holding spray, and I wiped the hair forward in the direction I needed to lay to give uh, the best lineup. Now I'm just cold air on my blow dryer, drying it and making it freeze. And see how I'm wiping it forward even with my glove. So. For the neck lineup, y'all, I like to start with the slant. And once I get to around like toward the middle or top of the ear, I like to use the last couple of teeth of my blade or the corner of my blade to finish making that arch shape around the ear. Make sure that you don't push these lineups back, that you keep them in the natural um, shape that the head is giving you and that the hair is giving you. Just, uh, yeah. 
be smooth with it go over it do it once brush the hair forward and then go over it again just to make sure that everything's there's no overhanging hairs and the lineup solidified because it's going to last longer for the client it's a detail work and it's detail in your work and it's going to set you apart and it's going to help the haircut to last longer which obviously is going to make the client happy and want to come get cut by you because they're going to notice it trust me for the front lineup y'all i like to start in the middle work my way to the side once the front meets the side i like to tap in the vertical bar Now front meet the side, I tap in a vertical bar, making sure I keep it as natural as possible. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start with my C cup. I like to start it at the top. Y'all are gonna be able to see, I start at the top, I go to the bottom, then I meet them in the middle. Make sure that they're the same on both sides. You can see we clearly didn't need enhancements. The cup was clean before enhancements. That's why I left this in there for all the enhancement haters. Uh, clearly, he don't need it. He just wanted it. So if he wants it, I'm going to provide it for him. So with the enhancements, y'all, I'm using Kiss Express. And I'm just spraying a light amount. For me, uh, I don't like it to be, like, too crazy enhanced. But, yeah, I'm just spraying a light amount. And I look at, like, the spray. It's kind of... You know, obviously it's gonna semi stain the skin. Um, gonna last about five days if taken care of properly. Then I'm gonna go on top of it with some fibers and the liquid kind of like holds the fiber so that they stay in better. I'm just applying some. Now, when you go to line the fibers up, y'all, line them up in the line that you already have created. Don't push the fibers back. Because then you're pushing the line up back. Just to make the fibers crispy. Like, don't do that. Like I said, just put them in the line that you already have. You can see how I'm clearing the forehead too. And just a secret little tip. After I like spray and what I do is I put some alcohol on a neck strip or sea breeze. That's what I use on a neck strip and I clear the forehead off. This is me using a pencil, y'all. I don't really use the pencil like that, but I just want to throw this in here just to show y'all how to, how to really actually use a pencil because there's a lot of people not using it correctly. But really you want to put it as close to the line as possible and you want it to be thin not thick looking crazy and this is the final cut y'all let me know what you think about it i think it turned out clean for the first time client um yeah taper clean line up crispy i think it's smooth i mean this is some things i'll do different obviously if i cut them again but like i said first time client and i'm recording while i'm trying to stay on schedule all that so with the circumstances i think it was a good cut clean cut smooth um man if you came to my channel because you like watching barber videos i hope this video satisfies you if you came for to learn something i hope you take something from my game apply it to yours and advance in your career and your craft and your life and if you came for the message i hope that it reached you and touched your heart your soul your mind and your body y'all can see man airline look crazy you know what i mean super clean Taper, man, look at it. Clean, line up crispy, man. Let me know what y'all think. Um, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. I'm humble at Jesus' feet. Without Jesus, I'm nothing but a filthy rag at the side of God, and I can't do anything. With Jesus, I am the righteousness of God, and I can do all things. All the power, glory, honor, and praise be to God. Man, I truly appreciate every single one of y'all who like, comment, subscribe. Just the support that I get from y'all, I truly appreciate every single person that even clicks on this video um uh hope and pray the best for y'all life and blessings hope to see you back on the next video god bless